back seat and, and the right, you know, the town, wherever they was going, and no interstates, everything was two lane highway back in those days. And John had a bad habit of putting his feet on the back of the front seat when he was sitting in the back, kind of in a crouched up position. And he, he was looking at his shoes. And he said, Carl, you know, you ought to write a song about a pair of shoes. And my dad got tickled at him. He said, John, he said, well, he can't say nothing about no pair of shoes. He said, there ain't nothing to be said about it. He said, I don't know, there ought to be something to be said about it. Everybody wears shoes. He said, no, he said, I, I, I don't know. And like a couple of months later, my dad was playing a dance in Jackson, Tennessee. It was a, a high school prom dance. And, and there was this couple out dancing, jitterbug. And all of a sudden, this guy steps back and points at his shoes. Uh-uh, don't step on my sweats. And said the girl looked like, oh, she was just mad. She just, she said, oh, I'm so sorry. But he meant what he said. He said, I couldn't get that out of my mind. He said, I went back to that government project house and said, I lay there in the bed and I said, that stupid fool talking, he was worried about a woman, a good looking woman stepping on his shoes. He said, I, I would never feel that strong about a pair of shoes. He said, good gracious, hurt her feeling. He said, but I couldn't get it out of my mind. I said, I got up out of bed, walked down the concrete steps. That was a government project house. And he, he didn't have any writing paper. So he took three potatoes out of a brown paper bag and smashed it. And he wrote the words, don't step on my blue suede shoes. He said, well, how am I going to start it? How, how? And he said, I thought an old nursery rhyme, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, now go, go, go. And he said, oh, that's it, that's how I'll kick it off. I'll kick it off with that right there. So, I get back to him calling Sam Phillips. My, my mom and dad didn't have a phone in their little apartment, so he had to go to the manager's office to call him. And, he, and, and Sam asked him, said, well, do me a little bit. He said, it's not like that old song, Them Golden Slippers, is it? He said, no, it's not, not like that. And he did just a little bit of the song. He said, get your brothers and get down here now. Let's cut that song. They'd already cut it, and he don't. So they went. And Blue Suede Shoes came out January 2nd of 1956. Now, my mom and dad were still living in that government project house. And that manager walked down to where they lived and said, Carl, said, there's a Mr. Sam Phillips on the phone and said, he's, he's, he's really got to talk to you. And said, he, he's, he said, you mean he's, on, he's waiting on the phone? He said, yeah, he's, he, he's on the phone in my office. And he, he said, he's got to talk to you. My dad gets on the phone and Sam says, Carl, Sit down. Tell you, I got something to tell you. Said, you've got to smash your record. Said, I just got an order for 25,000 copies of Blue Suede Shoes in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> now, around here, around Memphis, they were playing the A side, they were playing Honey Dog. But a disc jockey in Cleveland, Ohio turned the record over and played it. Well, he started getting called. Blue Suede Shoes went on to be the number, uh, number one record. And the first one to ever do it in all three fields of music, which was pop, country, and rhythm and blues. It went across the board, number one. My dad's version of it sold uh, two million copies. And the reason why Elvis recorded it, Scotty Moore told me this later. He said, we were doing a recording session at RCA Victory. And he said, Elvis loved the song. And he said, he loved Carl's version. He said, we got through doing the songs and we had some time left over during the session. And said, Elvis said, let's just do Carl's Blue Sweat You. And he said, that's how it happened. He said, we did one take. And that became Elvis's record. Elvis's version went to number 17. Of course, as years went on, Elvis became such a big star, a lot, you know, Blue suede shoes kind of in a, took, in a lot of people's mind, went, uh, went on to his own brother of success. But uh, it truly was my dad's song. He was, uh, he was the one that had the biggest, the biggest record with it. And, uh,
and I'm sure he didn't mind the royalties that he got from Elvis' version. <laughs> Thank you. 